Hi hey guys, Mike here at MH Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. Alright, well, we're going to do a subscriber request, as I usually do, and today's request was, can you model a DNA strand? Okay, so that kind of spinned model, if you know what I mean. Okay, so it's not that difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a polygon cylinder in our modeling menu, and we're going to make sure that we have enough subdivision in height and uh, actually in all directions, okay? So we're gonna go into our attribute editor, we're gonna go into our poly cylinder, let's check our settings there, that's all good. Then we're gonna go to poly cylinder shape. Uh, this one, sorry, yeah. Let's do, in height, let's do 30, and don't make that too low because it will look odd, okay? We'll do zero on the caps, we don't really need that. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of increase the height so we're going to stretch that out a bit maybe even a bit more like so and probably we'll need to increase our subdivisions a little bit so let's do let's do 40 by 40 it's fairly high poly but you know it'll give us a better result okay then we're going to hit control d to duplicate that we're going to hit w to move it i'm oh, sorry get out of that screen first Control D to duplicate, W to move it to about there, which I guess looks okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a new polygon cylinder and we're going to pull that over and I'll hit F to zoom in, E to rotate, hold down J to snap it, and we're going to rotate it until we're at exactly 90 degrees. Let's hit R to pull that out. And then we're going to scale it down in the middle to make it a bit thinner, depending on how thin you want it to be. That looks about right. We'll have a look from this view in wireframe mode. Uh, you want to have it stick into the original model just a little bit because of the twist that we're going to do. So I guess that's all right. Then we're going to bring that down close to the bottom. We're going to hit Control D to duplicate, and then hit W and pull that up to about there. And then we're going to hit Shift D and copy that all the way up. And keep on hitting Shift D until you're at the top. Okay, looks good. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that we have all that, we're going to select the whole thing. And we're going to go up in our modeling menu to mesh and combine to make it one object. And that's kind of important. Okay. And then we're going to go to modify and center pivot, edit, delete by type, history, and modify freeze transformations. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready to um, twist this guy. So for that, we're going to go up to the deform menu. We're going to go to nonlinear and twist. Let's select that. That creates our twist handle here. And then what we're going to do is in our attribute editor, we're going to go to our twist handle there. And we're going to start to tweak that angle. And there you go. And as you can see, we are starting to get that typical model that I talked about depending on how far you want that to twist okay i guess that looks all right so we'll do that okay now i want to kind of freeze this so it doesn't change so i'm going to drag select everything and then i'm going to go to edit delete by type history so now it's just a static object and i think it would be cool to kind of render this out in a nice scene okay so what we'll do is we'll take this guy, hit R, scale it down a bit, and hit W, bring it up. And then roughly bring that to the center of our grid, like so. And from a height point of view, we'll bring it down a bit until we have that sitting there. Okay. We're going to take a polygon plane. Hit R to scale that out. 
and we don't need that much subdivision so let's set that to one by one which is fine we're gonna right click and go to edge back there select that one edge and go to edit mesh and extrude hit w to pull that up then we're going to select that edge and go to edit mesh and bevel and we're going to decrease the fraction a bit let's do something like so we'll increase the number of segments to kind of round that out so that looks all right Maybe we can right click our object mode, make our model a bit smaller. Hit W, bring that down. F to zoom in. Let's see where we're at. Okay. So that said, let's uh, find a nice angle to render it. So we'll do something like this. We'll go to view and bookmark, edit bookmark, and set that to new. So we can jump back to that, hit apply and close. Then let's go to create lights. Come on. There we go, area light. We're gonna hit W to pull that up. Pull that out and then we're gonna hit T on our keyboard so we can aim it. And we're gonna hit seven on our keyboard so we can actually see what the light is doing, okay? So that should be about right. We'll pull that up a bit and pull that out. Now, um, area light is fine in my attribute editor. I want to have some decay on the light, so I'm going to set that to near. And as a result, I now have to increase the intensity to, let's say, 5, <clears throat> maybe even a bit more than that. Let's do 7. And I don't want the color to be too white, so let's go with yellow and then bring that way down so it's very close to white okay now for this light i want my shadows to be ray trace shadows and i'm going to increase these values because i'm going to make my dna model glass so i want to increase the shadow rays to at least eight sorry and depth will do eight as well okay so that's that then i'm going to hit Control d to duplicate that light pull that over here bring that down a bit now as far as intensity goes i'm going to bring this guy way down let's do 2.5 and i don't want any shadows from this guy and then we're going to hit Control d again move that back here like so bring that a bit closer and pull that up just a bit and for that one and actually let's change the color on that one as well there we go uh, intensity will do 1.5 i shouldn't have any shadows on that so that's good Let's change the color on this one as well. Go to that predefined color. There we go. And then what we can do is apply some material to this guy. Right click assign new material. And we'll do, actually we'll not do a Lambert. We'll do a Fong E. And we'll change that to white. Then we'll take our model and we'll right click, sign new material, MIA material X, material tab, presets, and glass solid and replace. And we're going to go down and change that color a little bit under refraction color. And let's do a greenish color. Kind of make that nice and dark. Like so. And then we're going to go into our render settings. I'm going to use mental ray, obviously. Uh, okay. 
in my common tab I'm going to go way down to render options and enable default light I'm going to turn that off then we're going to go to our presets I'm going to set the image size to HD 1080 let's see all of that looks okay in my quality tab the overall quality I'm going to bump that up to about 1.5 doesn't have to be 1.5 exactly, but lighting quality looks okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go to trace depth. Uh, because of our glass material, I'm going to bump up these uh, values a little bit. Reflection, I'll do 6. Transmission, 5, and I'll leave that at 6. Then we're going to go to our scene tab. Okay, um, image-based lighting, yes, we'll turn that on, uh, looks all right, and that we're going to leave alone, and that we're going to leave alone. I'm just looking for something that I can't find, let's see, legacy options, yeah, there we go. Under the quality tab, under legacy options, we're going to go and select global illumination, and then we're going to go to caustics. And we're going to turn on caustics and let's increase the accuracy to about 150 and let's see the rest of it looks okay so we should be good to go all right so i'm going to go to view bookmark and new so we got our model set up here uh, there is a chance that we're going to have light that isn't strong enough but we'll see we'll see uh, quite soon before we do that, I'm going to select the uh, HDRI image that I want to use for my image-based lighting. So let's hit that folder, go to Maya, to my HDRI files, and I typically like to use these sky files. And if you want to have these, you can find them for free on hdrlabs.com, just so you know. So that said, let's uh, hit render. I'll pause the video. I'll see you guys when it's done. Okay, see you in a bit. Well, guys, I just uh, aborted the render for a sec here uh, simply because the lighting wasn't strong enough. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys and instead of light decay, we're going to set that to no decay, which will make it much brighter. That should definitely fix our problem so we'll do that uh, let's see where do you go yep yeah, right there and we'll take a slightly different angle on our model okay I'll just hit 4 for wireframe mode so I can see it better and I kind of want to have something like that all right cool Okay, that said, let's give this another try. I'll pause the video. See you guys in a sec. Okay, guys, well, there you have it. There's our final render. Uh, turned out okay, I think. So for those of you who are uh, patrons to my site, you will find the Maya file and the HRI file in the shared drive. If you want to become a patron, you can find details below. And if you do not, you can still get this model if you like. Um, and I'll put a download link uh, in the comment section. And you can get this scene and the HDRI for $1. Okay. So that said, thank you guys very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please let me know. And that said, see you guys next time. Bye.